Hey, it's North Country Trains. I'm Harrison, and we're finally in the basement where I'll be deconstructing my current layout and building my new one. My current layout can be seen above my desk, but it had some major issues, so I'll be tearing it down and building a new one. My new layout will model the DNH in Plattsburgh, New York in the 1970s, so stay tuned for more layout video updates. You may have noticed my friend here on the desk. His name is Hurley, and it looks like he wants us to see something. This is a photo I took of the Amtrak Phase 3 Heritage Unit number 145 on the southbound Adirondack at Wickham's Marsh in Port Kent. Now let's talk about my current modeling projects. Here we have an HO scale 3D printed canoe I made as a test print after assembling a Prusa i3 MK3 printer for my robotics team. As you can see, it's pretty detailed and after sanding and painting, it'll look even better. Next we have what looks like a bunch of styrene, but I promise it isn't. These are parts for a Santa Fe flat car I'm scratch building. I haven't gotten very far yet, but I hope to continue this project in the near future. This is a two by six foot module that Gideon and I are working on. That is actually part of the Adirondack and Lake Champlain Railroad. As you can see, we've added a crossover and strip scenery on this corner with the intentions of adding an industry. Gideon has an idea for that and we'll be sharing that soon. Now we're on my layout and as you can see the GP mill is still standing because it's a really nice scene and I hate to tear it down. Pretty soon though it'll come down with the rest of the scenery. Here on the engine track in Plattsburgh we have DNH 7312 which has the honor of being the last engine on the layout. All other locomotives have been removed hardware store sadly has been removed. I loved it there, but I had to start somewhere. Before I tear out the GP mill, I thought I'd share how I built this chain link fence. I started with music wire and soldered the frame together. Then I glued some mesh material onto the frame and painted it with a Sharpie paint marker. The gates also open, which is really neat. Let me know in the comments if you would like a tutorial on how I built this in detail. Now let's take a look at the Walther's 50-foot waffle-sided boxcar. I know it's been a few years since it came out, but I never really reviewed it, and it's still a really great car, so let's check it out. The boxcar is part of the Walther's mainline series and features metal wheel sets and body-mounted couplers. The paint is very nice and crisp, and although it lacks the details more expensive cars do, it's a very nice-looking car. Mine is lettered for the DNH, and the prototype was built in 1974, making it a perfect fit for my layout. The couplers were just a hair too low on mine, but it shouldn't be a problem. It's also rather light, but it's a very nice model, and I definitely recommend it to anyone looking for a distinctive box car from the 1970s and up. That's all we have for the first layout video update. Thanks for watching.